Hey, I'm Rob Adler, and welcome to Understanding Upstate. It's the podcast dedicated to exploring what makes upstate New York such a unique place. Each week, my co-host Jim Search and I dive into a new upstate topic to better understand what's up upstate, and today, we're talking about the Borscht Belt. Yes, indeed. The uh, also known as the Yiddish Alps. Oh, did not know. Yeah, uh, Larry King. Uh affectionately coined that as the yiddish alps okay uh so an an ode to the uh humor that had once come out of the uh come out of the borscht belt i mean speaking of humor this is your your uh stock and trade i've uh i've told some jokes <laughs> uh um, and i've laughed at a few of them oh man you've and you've heard you've heard I feel like if anybody, you've probably heard my voice tell jokes more than anybody probably ever has. I mean, I've certainly heard your voice tell the same jokes uh, more than anyone else has. Uh, that's because I edited uh, your comedy album for anyone. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not going to every gig, right? Like, no, <laughs> no. At this point, yeah, I you you don't have to do that. I'll I'll keep you updated. Every well, other though, every other. I appreciate that. Hey, listen, um, you know, you go to gymsearchcomedy.com and you'll find all the dates of me doing stand-up comedy. So there you go. one should one should take it on themselves of doing it. Well, speaking of doing it, should we uh, should we get into the Borscht Belt? Yes, the Borscht Belt uh, located right uh, above New York City in the Catskills and parts of Sullivan, Orange, and Ulster County. Well, let's do it. So, yeah, I mean, it is definitely part of uh, the fabric of uh, comedy in so much of so many uh, great comedians came out of there um, or at least had a good run. Uh, Lenny Bruce, Phyllis Diller, Rodney Dangerfield, Joan Rivers, Milton Berle, Don Rickles. like Basically anyone that was a guest star on Scooby-Doo. (laughs) (laughs) yeah uh i feel like that's a good place a good place to go with that um and you know these are all like jewish and jewish adjacent uh comedians of that kind of brand Mm -hmm. right like the oh take my wife you know like my back hurts everyone (laughs) goes nuts right (laughs) that sort of shit yeah um and also the self-deprecation shit too right they're like i'm the worst and everyone goes nuts (laughs) Um, for that too like hey i'm the worst as well so it's great um but yeah you know like i was saying before the borscht belt or the yiddish alps as uh larry king once affectionately coined it uh have you ever had borscht i haven't it's have you pretty good i've had is it good yeah i've had there's like two kinds. There's plain or just regular borscht, which is like reddish. And okay. I don't know if I've had that, but I've had white borscht. And the best way I can describe it is it's a nap for your stomach. Like it's a nap for your stomach. It's so <laughs> fucking good. Uh, we we had it up in like Greenpoint at a Polish restaurant. That would track. Which I'm not gonna I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce. Uh, but it starts with a K. If you just put in Greenpoint borscht, you'll find it. Yeah, that'll that'll pop up. Very yeah, it's good. Well, then duly duly noted. <laughs> um, it uh, you know, so the the name right, uh, where that name came from, as you were saying, it's a soup of Ukrainian origin, uh, made with beetroot and the main ingredient giving it a deep reddish purple color mm-hmm. that was popular in many Central and Eastern European countries. Uh, now the name belt, like the Borscht Belt, was kind of a play on the like existing colloquial regions of the country, right? right? So you have like the Bible Belt, the Rust Belt, this being the Borscht Belt. Uh, so to give a little bit of history of, you know, where these, uh, sort of, uh, resorts and places for people to go started, um, in its heyday, you know, there was roughly 500 resorts uh, in this area. Whoa. 
right? <laughs> like this was this was pretty this is pretty huge, um, and it was a popular vacation spot for the Jewish community from New York City in the twenties uh, throughout the sixties. So you know, at the at the uh, risk of our, our uh, viewers or viewers, Jesus, <laughs> listeners. I mean, if you're in my window watching. Um, <laughs> You can probably guess that, like, in the 20s and 30s, uh, a lot of hotels and resorts uh, were not happy with having Jewish people be there. Right. Um, they were having signs up that said, New Hebrews or Consumptives, which is pretty awful. Yeah. Uh, so this discrimination, you know, led to an alternative lodging scenario that would readily accept Jewish families as guests. And, you know, with that being said, this sprung up the Borscht Belt of being a place for the Jewish community to go to, uh, again, from the 20s to the 60s. And this is like the time when more people, I mean, people do it now, but it's more the ultra wealthy, like you would summer in a place, right? Like you would sure. be there for like a whole month, uh, at least a week, right? Like multiple months if, if you can swing it. Uh, yep. So these were like basically ad hoc communities for the, you know, for the whole summer. Exactly. And like, you know, if you go up in through the uh, mentioned counties, Sullivan, Ulster, Orange County, there still is a substantial Jewish community mm -hmm. uh, that lives up there as well. So uh, this is, and this is also something pretty interesting uh, that I didn't know that uh, the single scene there was also very important. Mm -hmm. This was... There were a lot of people were uh, hooking up up there in the uh, sure. in the Borscht Belt. Uh, it was many hotels would often hire young male college students to attract women of the similar age. How do you get that gig? I mean, I wouldn't have been hired for it, but <laughs> <laughs> well, don't sell yourself short, uh, well. uh, there, <laughs> my friend. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was often referred to as the uh, one. It became one giant marriage broker uh, <laughs> where you could go and get uh, go and get married. Uh, so the uh, so the Borscht Belt hotels, right? The bungalow colony, summer camps and Kuchelians is what I have in my notes. Mm -hmm. I probably butchered that. Just as you were, you were smart enough to try not to pronounce the name of the restaurant in Greenpoint. I was foolish enough to try and pronounce a uh, self-catered boarding house. Uh, I'm going to say you nailed it. Uh, well, I, pre I appreciate you for that. But yeah, like, you know, as I was saying before, like these really flourished uh, during this time. And it became a place to go. These were, this was the hot spot. You know, there was so much entertainment happening up there. Um, as we spoke about earlier, like this was a cradle of Jewish comedy since like the 20s. And, you know, we talked about all the famous, I mean, there is, I only named just a few of the famous comedians yeah. that played up there. I mean, there was so many more that just were. We're we're coming out of there, and the the and, uh, like the circumstances of the <laughs> the circumstances as if it's a negative thing, but like the again, you're living up there, right, for weeks, months, whatever. Uh, so right. the resort you're staying at, like they're providing activities and opportunities for entertainment. So they're they're bringing comedians from the city uh, up to to do gigs, right, like to basically do like dinner shows and stuff sure yeah i mean this was a again this was a very uh kind of fertile ground for entertainment and in this case comedy and also i mean there were other things as well i mean they had movies there was it was a resort they had swimming you know they had all the some of the nature shit you want to get into <laughs> um, sure. should the spirit move you uh but like there's a very and it's you know, much in the vein of comedy, you know, there is like a specific kind of style that was attached. And we talked about this before, but there's a specific kind of style that's attached to like a Borscht Belt kind of comedian. Yep. You know, just like the Chitlin Circuit for black folks is a very specific type of comedy right. uh, that will that that you think about when you mention that. But like in this case, talking about Borscht Belt, 
you know, it's like the the physical complaints and ailments, you know, <laughs> like my doctor said I was in terrible shape. So I told him I want a second opinion. And he said, well, you're ugly, too. <laughs> uh, good stuff. <laughs> this is and also this is like so much up your alley. Yeah. Like, like it this because it, it's heavy on the puns, heavy on like dad jokes. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. So yeah, this uh this this speaks to you. I know your sensibilities. No, well. you you got me. No type of shit. You got me dialed in. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, you know, like bad luck, you know, aggravating relatives and nagging wives. I mean, that's Dangerfield's bread and butter, yeah. right? I'll I'll say but, it's I don't want to say it's a simple style of comedy because like it it has to be so rapid fire. Like you watch Dangerfield do this kind of stuff and like yeah, he can do 60 minutes of one-liners, which, like, that's so many jokes. That's a lot of jokes. So right. many jokes. Uh, and if you listen to someone who does it poorly, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's brutal. Like, I actually got an album not too long ago uh, from some Brooklyn comic in the 60s who, like, he, like, did... Um, he did some mob boss's daughter's wedding. Like he, you know, had all these like mob Aye. affiliated uh, accolades to his list of gigs. But like, Jim, it was not good. <laughs> it was not okay. It was not good. I'm sure it killed in South Brooklyn in the '60s. Right, it was not aged well. Uh, and yeah, it it speaks to like how honed that type of comedy has to be to like to pull it off right and how just like on your toes you have to be as now was so was the album you listened to was like there no like did it not get a good response like like where did people not laugh when the set was happening in the room at like again the the album is basically like Italian humor, right? That's the the whole idea of it. Or by that I mean sure. like Brooklyn Long Island Italian humor. Uh yeah. but he's not really self deprecating. It's more just like, Oh, these youngsters today. I I, I tell you. Uh right. it's, like, <laughs> it's just not uh no like no revelations or or any more thought than than that. So it's it's in that style, but it's not. Uh, and like, yeah, he's the people there. To to your point, he's getting he's getting some yucks. He's got he got his laughs. Yeah, he got his he got his yuck yucks, if you will. Yeah, it doesn't stand up to like you know. There's Dangerfield jokes and movies and stuff that are still sure still hit today, right? Like, in fact, uh, when I was like putting together my notes, one of the sections I have says, "Take my wife." And my jokes. <laughs> hey. Love it. Right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, obviously, Dangerfield being a legend of this type of comedy and this type of style. Uh, yeah. Again, he really was the classic, like, you know, my wife and I were happy for 20 years, and then we met. <laughs> ah, take my wife, please. You know? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it really, again, it's... It is, it has, it has its place in time and like, there's still a circuit. Like if mm. you wanted to work, uh, if you work in that vein and you work in that sort of self-deprecation, right. uh, there's, there's folks. Oh, I will. work in self-deprecation. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> putting, in, putting in extra hours. <laughs> yeah. Putting in extra hours. That's funny. So this is like the the setup of what the Borscht Belt was, right? Like, again, you had like a market from New York City that uh, easily accessible to upstate New York. I mean, for our listeners, our speedy freaks, uh, if you will, (laughs) hey, Uh, for our speedy freaks out there and even those who may, in fact, not be... uh, so uh, in tune with what's happening in terms of the geography of New York state, you know, Sullivan, Ulster and orange counties are like right above New York city. Like you can drive there in like 25 minutes mm-hmm. if you're like in the uh, Northern boroughs. So like you have definitely, you have the market. Now 
by like the late 50s, you know, many of these places began closing. Um, and I think in part because people started to uh, go to more like exotic locations yep. for vacations. And Adirondacks, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The more the more Tony Adirondacks. Uh, and also like as you kind of move down the line, you know, the 70s there. And again, I say this with a grain of salt. Um there were a little less discriminatory practices in terms of hotels, right. not to say that that didn't happen because obviously it's America, but not nearly as bad as the 20s, right. <laughs> like the 20s <laughs> right. and 30s. Um, the 70s, not yeah, it didn't fly so much. Right. So like I said, like by the late 50s, uh, many began closing with uh, most being gone by the 70s, uh, but some f- major resorts continue to operate uh, and fewer and fewer into the 90s. Uh, you know, Grossinger Catskill Resort Hotel closed in 86, and the Concord Resort Hotel struggled to stay open until 98 and was subsequently demolished for a possible casino site. Uh, Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yay, yay for, uh, yay for decline. Um, but yeah, like to j- even just get a little bit, uh, you know, like I, like I'd mentioned earlier, um, you know, some of the reasons why, uh, why the resort started to close is, uh, railways also, uh, began, uh, cutting service to the area. Right. And the popularity of air travel increased. That's a that's a real like interesting um, thing I've noticed. Where just through the us doing this podcast and just my own affinity for upstate, like we used to have a. I mean, the country itself used to have much more connected railways and that accessed more remote regions. And even again, like we were I just mentioned the Adirondacks, very similar thing. There were train lines that went up there (laughs) william rockefeller as we discussed uh, helped close (laughs) some of those but um yeah they were they a lot of those rails serviced uh some of these more um remote vacation areas and just they just started closing down in in the 50s the the access to those areas uh, right, and, but some are reopening uh i think the uh the adirondack line just reopened I want to say within the last year, um, which is interesting, which is cool that we're, we're getting some of that back. So, well, and I think like, I mean, it, it also, I get, I think in some, and I say this in some instances can be a little bit more cost effective than flying. Yep. Right. So like, you know, especially if you're traveling, that far north or like like say in this case like it might be easier to take a train than like schlep into the fucking airport oh, yeah. right so you know those are you know some of the uh some of the other reasons uh for the old borscht belt to lose its luster uh during that time uh in 87, though, this is interesting. In 87, New York's mayor, Ed Koch, a.k.a. the guy, how am I doing? That was his thing. Is He would always ask people, how do you think I'm doing? Which tells me that you're not doing a good job. How um, do you think Eric Adams is doing, Jim? <laughs> um, Different well, podcast. How much time do you got? <laughs> uh, for the man who uh, sounds like he's struck by lightning, <laughs> not very good. Uh, he also sounds like a YouTube clip that hasn't fully loaded. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> back to I'll oh, see. I got Rob with that one, folks. He, I got, I got you on the rope. Yeah. No. Again, you know your audience. You, you know your audience. Listen, I, I got, you, I had you on the ropes there with that one. Um, I, uh, so yeah, but so Mayor, <laughs> uh, Mayor Koch, uh, who, aka Mister, how am I doing? Uh, proposed buying the Gibber Hotel in uh, by Kayamisha Lake. Uh, proposed buying that and housing the homeless. And to the shock of absolutely no one, that idea was opposed by local officials. Not interested in housing the homeless from New York City in upstate New York. So, 
Sure. That was kind of the, uh, I guess, for re- repurposing of uh, of what one of these resorts would be. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what I got. Uh, I mean, now obviously, I mean, there's books, and that's the other thing, folks, is that like the topics that we talk about, minus the peppermint pigs, which I feel like. <laughs> You'd be hard pressed to write a full book on the power. Oh, I've already pigs. started. I've already started. <laughs> you know what, Jim? Don't don't speak too soon. It's buddy. my next documentary uh, project. <laughs> Do three but, hours on peppermint pigs, man. <laughs> I mean, listen. There's crazier crazier things have gone to uh, gone to film, but you know that's so. But yeah, I mean, that's really the most that I've got in terms of the the. The, the resorts and the experience that uh, that happened yeah. during that time now are again are there books out there are there <laughs> other resources that will tell you so much more about the borscht belt of well, course there to, are, to but... peak peak uh peak their interest right uh yeah i was, I was gonna say you... a nice uh one good depiction i saw was uh marvelous miss Maisel, which i think we mentioned uh yeah in reference to the apple lacken did i get it Appalachian. Fuck. God, every time. Uh I think I think for the like to do like the do the the edit, you should just like bleep this out like a swear word. Yeah. Like, did I get it? I'm gonna I'm have like, to. It's getting embarrassing. <laughs> uh but but they have I think a whole part of a season takes place uh, at one of those resorts. Uh and they sure. obviously like depict the um that style of comedy, uh, but it's uh, th- yeah, it's a good. I don't know how accurate it is, but uh, and also the the other thing I was going to say is uh, I don't know how much you're on Zillow, but <laughs> if you're on Zillow, you'll notice in that area um, a lot of those former um, resorts at some point just got turned into housing, right? So mm-hmm. a lot of those little communities are just they still you know they're still around um but it's right like it's just people living in these cool little bungalows and these uh little you know make what ended up being like makeshift little towns and cities just because the resorts you know cleared out uh sure and they're they've left uh left some housing which is not the the worst thing which- which listen sounds fun like sounds pretty cool in the summer yeah. don't know if i'd want to do that in the winter mm, um, yeah the, the, as you say that the issue is a lot of those are they call two or three season homes <laughs> so not mm, uh, yeah uh, that's one way of saying not insulated <laughs> yeah not again not the not the fucking wave uh, but you know, to your point about the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, uh, in the setting of one of the episodes being in a uh, Borscht Belt resort, I mean, the the show is based on Joan Rivers, yeah, loosely based on her life. So it would totally make sense that I've never seen the show, but that old Mrs. Maisel uh, <laughs> finds herself up at one of these. Uh, Do you ever home- get people being like, Jim, you're a comedian? You would really like this show. Uh, I get, well, I'll get like, not only so much like, I don't really get like, you'll like this yeah. show, but like, it'll be like, you're a comedian, so you must know about X. Mm. Or like, you're a comedian, you must know about, have you heard of like, this person? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like, this film? Which, which I guess I know. just did, but. <laughs> 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 well, I feel like I, I I wasn't saying it as a as a slight sure, per se. Sure. Uh, See, that's I, just I, my self deprecating nature. It's how, you it's know how what you you might you might do well in the borscht belt, man. <laughs> they're they're waiting for Let's you. Fire those resorts uh, up. Yeah, get them back up, man. Um, I actually went to Bear Mountain, which mm-hmm. is not too far away from there. Uh, from these resorts, and it did have a very like, uh, borscht belty resort kind of vibe. Oh yeah, like you know what I mean. Yeah. Like I was, I stayed at some resort there for a couple of days, and it was the site of where, 
uh, Branch Rickey, who owned the Brooklyn Dodgers, mm-hmm. signed uh, Jackie Robinson. Whoa. So, like, the table where it happened, they cool. have it, like, they have a section of it. And in fact, his jersey is draped over his seat. Awesome. There, which is just pretty, out. Pretty Not even, rad. like, like behind no, it glass, w- just out. It was it was draped over yeah it was draped over a chair cool and I was like wow this is pretty fucking slick man there we go um but that sounds like another yeah. episode oh my goodness yes we talk the uh the signing of the the sight of the sign of uh of Jackie Robinson I mean we're gonna yeah. we're gonna have to cover the origins of baseball and how it wasn't in fucking Hoboken <laughs> uh, but again I, I I digress another episode. Yeah, neither neither here nor there. <laughs> no, Jim, uh, but it was here. It was No, here. you're right. No, and it was. And New York over everything. Upstate New York over everything. Uh but I mean, do you have do we have anything else for the bell? I don't think so. I think uh I think this is a nice little uh introduction to it. Um I certainly want to eat more borscht. I know that much. I'll try it. I mean, listen, I'm not allergic to it by any stretch. If you and... like um again, I've I've sampled the white borscht variety. I think I've had regular borscht too. It's good. If you like soup, it's good. I like soup. You heard it here <laughs> first, folks. Jim Search <laughs> likes soup. Yeah, he uh he fucks with some soup. <laughs> well, uh, if that's not a signal to move to the ending of the episode, <laughs> I don't know what is. Jim, what are we what are we up to yeah. next week? All right, Rob, next week we are breaking format, okay? Mm-hmm. For our speedy mm-hmm. freaks out there, don't worry. Don't be afraid. We're doing something a little different, but different is good. <laughs> we are going to be reviewing the rewrite which was shot on location in Binghamton, New York. Featuring none other than Hugh Grant. America's treasure, uh, Marissa Tomei. Yeah, uh, American darling Marissa Tomei is in that film as well. Uh, I can tell you as a Binghamtonian, I remember the hubbub of this film Mm. being shot um, on location. It's got a lot of Binghamton in it. Like we were were skimming through and like everyone's wearing Binghamton merch. Like it's, uh, there might be a carousel or two in there. Somebody's on meth <laughs> there. There's someone smoking crystal. Sure, sure. Uh, there's a fight. <laughs> there's a fist fight. I mean, this is, I was, I was getting weepy. I was getting misty for home. I'm like, oh, you're beating up somebody because they look different. Mm. Oh my God. This is my home. I only make fun of Binghamton because I love it. Anybody else does it, then we have a problem. Uh, but. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're going to be doing next week, folks. Uh, we're l- looking forward to it, yeah. and I know you will as well. So watch it. And yeah, usually, usually we do a a, a clue, but we wanted to uh, give you the opportunity to watch it, and it's streaming for free. It's on Tubi. Yeah. It's got some commercials. Uh, hell, I'm going to throw a link in in for the movie in the description. Why not? Why? Yeah, not? just listen, click through there. Let's... Watch it right after this, and you'll be all set for next week's episode. Let's get crazy, you speedy freaks. Hey, Jim, after they watch the rewrite so they can listen to our review. Whoa! What other things could they occupy their time with? What else could they uh, listen to? Wow. Okay. Other things they could listen to. You know, the, it's. I've, I've been thinking it, this is a little bit of a rom com, mm-hmm. uh, the rewrite. I think there is some humor sure. there. But you know what? I've got humor for you as well with an album called Upstate Understandings, which is my debut comedy album produced by Rob Adler. And you'll get to hear my voice uh, talking all sorts of comedy business. Where can you get it? All right, let me tell you. If you go to gymsearch.bandcamp.com, that is a good place to get copies of this album. There's physicals, there's digital. The world is yours. Also, if you want to see me do comedy in real life because sometimes I stand on stage in front of strangers and talk to them. Go to gymsearchcomedy.com and again, you'll see all my show dates there. Uh, you know, I'm around New York City quite a bit in January, so be sure to go check me out there. Now, 
after you do that though, right? Like you've laughed and you just have run out of steam and you're like, how do I recharge? Well, here's the thing. This is a way you can do that. Mm-hmm. And it's sonically. Mm-hmm. It is through your ears. It's some of the, it's some of the most melodious music I've ever heard. And Rob, can I think you know where I'm going here, right? Yeah. What can they do? What can they listen to on that side after they've listened to the album? Well, if you want to listen to something that will soothe your ears like white borscht will soothe your stomach, <laughs> you can check out my album called New York Sticky, available at brooklynfrequency.bandcamp.com. And yeah, like Jim was saying, it's uh, a great uh, great mix of tunes that I did all the writing on, all the composition and playing and everything. Uh, inspired by like funk, disco, go go, and hip hop, uh, and it's uh, yeah, it's a great little album. So go pick up a uh, pick up a copy of both our albums. Uh, yep. W- again, when you finish watching the rewrite, yes, or before, or before, or during. It might be a bad movie. I don't know. Maybe you want to occupy yourself. <laughs> <laughs> go over to Bandcamp. I love if somebody does and they're just like fuck this film and they like. <laughs> listen to your album and then they listen to our review of the film they're like wait a minute but you didn't talk about your album during the film <laughs> and it's like well you know what they didn't license it for the soundtrack that's true so. not yet not, not yet. yet give not it time yet. though uh but yeah that's it uh rob how are we gonna get out of here what's our what's our what's our exit here? i thought of one i got i got it for us uh are you ready yes jim we really yucked it up today didn't we Ooh. <laughs> Woo! Folks, I almost blew out the speaker on that one, man. <laughs> Holy moly, guacamole. Uh, that's, yeah, it's not going to get better than that. No. Sad to say. <laughs> All right. Bye. Understanding Upstate is a podcast hosted by Jim Search and Rob Adler, edited by Rob Adler, and music from Regal Monk.